Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, where today, the big story, again, continues to be the modern market and just the spikes that are going on and the volatility right now. Beyond that, though, we're also going to talk about Standard and Legacy, as we always do, and other notable cards, including some Hot Popper cards. Quickly before we get started, though, just a really fast reminder, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support the channel, one of which is our Patreon page. You're also going to find links to products on Amazon. If you make any purchases on Amazon, once you go through that first link, no matter what it is, we'll get a small percentage for the channel. And finally, Flipside Gaming still offering their promo code for our viewers, and hopefully you can save yourself some cash and support the channel at the same time. Thank you not only to the folks that look at those links, but to all the viewers, you all make the channel what it is. Thank you very much, and let's get into it. We're going to begin with the top five standard cards that have lost value this week. Now you're going to notice as we go through here, standard's getting a little stagnant. No surprise because we're approaching a new set release. We're going to get more previews coming up soon. And once that new set drops, a lot of people are going to wait and see for a little bit, kind of see where the meta goes. Some will even wait to the Pro Tour. So you're going to notice there's not going to be as many big ticket purchases, especially right now. Number five, though, is Raska Relic Seeker, down 31 cents to 9.91. Now, the previous meta, she looked pretty good. This time around, she's been seeing less and less play as time goes on. If she doesn't make a comeback with Dominaria, she will continue to tick down probably pretty heavily. She still sees play right now. Tokens, decks here and there, they're still kicking around, sometimes out of the board of some other builds. But for the most part, she's starting to disappear a little bit. Number four, Torrential Gear Hulk, down 34 cents to $12. Now, this is a card that's been good and standard ever since it premiered in Kaladesh, and that really hasn't changed. Now, granted, when the pool was a little smaller, this card had a bigger presence, and also that was before Braid was kicking around and such. But even with all that going against it, the card is still very good. You'll find this in the very popular Grixis Energy deck, even if it's just a one-of sometimes. This also shows up in various control builds and other decks out there right now. So it continues to tick down. I know a lot of people are probably a little apprehensive about picking this up because it is closing in on rotation that will happen this fall for this card. But even beyond that, I do think part of the problem is all your standard players that are the real hardcore standard players, they have four copies of this. They're hanging on to it just in case, if nothing else. And they don't need to pick up new ones right now. Number three, Kamina Tyrant of Araska, down 35 cents to $11. This one's kind of interesting. Now, we've been following this for a number of weeks as it slid down and down and down and down. But I do think this card is going to stabilize over the next week or two. And here's what's going on. First off, $11. I mean, Commander really propped this up more than anything. A lot of Commander players are playing Merfolk decks with this as their Commander right now. So that's helped the value. As far as standard goes, yeah, the Merfolk deck was definitely a thing, and I'm not going to say it was a bad deck. I don't think it was, but it never put up the big result that a lot of people were anticipating. Because of that, they moved on to some other decks, even though you'll still find Merfolk decks kicking around with four of these in it. Modern even picked up on this card, usually a one of, but it is out there, and it does seem to be performing just fine in that environment as well. But the big news this week is Merfolk Trickster, one of the Dominaria cards that got previewed yesterday, as a matter of fact. And it looked really good. I'll link the video where we talked about it at the end of this one if you want more info. But ultimately, I think that card alone may at least get people speculating that Murpho could be stronger in the next standard. And that could lead to more people wanting to either pick up or hold on to these. So I do think you'll see some stabilization soon. Number two, Rekindling Phoenix, down $1.34 to $29.99. So what can I say about this card that hasn't been said before? This was kind of the marquee card of this past meta. And it's been in all sorts of decks this whole time, of course, right? All the aggro builds, some of the mid-range builds. We'll find this, of course, in big red vehicles. The list goes on and on. So it does take down significantly, though, this week. Why is that? Well, mostly because, again, as we approach the end of this meta and the beginning of a new meta, a lot of players are going to hang on to their wallets for a bit. They don't want to buy into a $30 card that maybe doesn't see as much play as it once did, or perhaps they just see another deck that really catches their eye in this new meta that they want to play. So they're going to hold on a little bit on these purchases. This is going to affect cards like this one and the next card we're going to look at, as a matter of fact. Now, aside from that, will the card still be good in the new meta? I'm sure it will be. Will Dominaria bring some cards to check it a little bit? Probably. It looks like we've already seen some of that, actually, in previews. So even with those new cards, though, 
I feel like it's still really good. But the big thing, and the reason I think the market's being a little short-sighted here, is a couple weeks from now, those Challenger decks come out. There's two Challenger decks that really desperately want this card, one of which the mono red aggro, the other being the vehicles deck. So I do think people are going to pick those up, and this is the low-hanging fruit for those decks. Like, if you want to upgrade those very fast and you have the money to do so, this is the first card you're going to think of. I think this spikes over the next few weeks. Number one, the Scarab God, down $1.40 to $31.35. Still a great card, Grixis Energy, of course, a lot of the mid-range builds, control builds. They're all playing this. We've known it's good, it's been good. Is it still going to be good when Dominaria comes out? Sure, of course it is. However, again, $30, $32 card, a lot of people don't want to spend that until they see what's going to happen with the next meta. All right, let's move on to the cards that have gained value this week. And you're going to see some cards here that are being influenced from other places other than Standard, of course. The first one being number five, as foretold, up 25 cents to 951. This is kind of a funny card because, of course, this is being influenced by modern, not standard. However, for so long, this card actually got really hot due to the excitement around the As Foretold Living End deck. A lot of streamers were playing the deck. There were a lot of players just talking about it, a lot of buzz around it. But it went a really, really long time without putting up a decent result. Finally, it got one good result, but it was a variant of the deck everyone was playing, not necessarily the core deck. And then there was the upheaval of the Jace and Blood Braid and Bannings and all of that. And a lot of people just kind of forgot about As Foretold Living End and the meta marched on. Since then, though, a few decks have been looking at this card and picking it up, like Extra Turns as well as Teamer Moon, so it gets a little bit of a tick up this week. Number four, the Immortal Sun, up 40 cents to 796. Now, this card has seen a little bit of standard play. Not a whole lot, of course, but you have seen this sometimes out of the boards as a one of in the Vampire Builds, or sometimes in the Acquisition deck as a one of, for example. But what really held this card back in this past meta was that casting cost. Very powerful card if you can get it on the battlefield. And if you pay six to get it out there, maybe on turn seven or eight or something, you don't want it to just get abraded. And that was kind of the problem. However, things are going to change because a lot of people are thinking about the implication of Llanowar Elf entering the format with Dominaria. If you can play this on turn five instead of turn six, or maybe even... Play this on turn four if you get really lucky as opposed to a turn seven play if you're not getting lucky. Does this card get better? Is it worth that risk then? And that has a lot of people thinking right now. Will that be the case? We'll have to wait and see. But at least right now, a lot of people are trying to figure out if that's good enough. Also, too, don't underestimate Commander. That's what's propped this value up up until this point, And I don't think that's going to change going forward. Number three, Liliana Death's Majesty up 45 cents to 7.99. Another decent utility card that I think was maybe a little undervalued considering the amount of play it sees. It doesn't see huge play necessarily, but it is part of some big decks. Sometimes Grixis Energy, not all builds, but a lot of times you'll see a one of. A lot of the mid-range decks, though, will run this. Number two, Dire Fleet Daredevil up 53 cents to 546. I do think this card's actually undervalued, believe it or not. I realize it's a Rivals card, and that was the most recent standard set. And this is a rare, not a mythic, like, say, the Phoenix. So there's a lot more copies of this running around the marketplace right now, and you do have to keep that in mind. But with that being said, I think it's important to remember that I think Rivals probably got opened a lot less than a lot of other recent standard sets. First off, if you can compare it to, say, Ixalan, Ixalan was being drafted alone for a longer period of time. So that means a lot of packs get open. This gets drafted with Ixalan for a shorter period of time, and that means a lot less packs got open, and it ran smack dab into Masters 25 and some other supplemental products coming out. That's a thing you have to consider. So with that in mind, is this a good pickup at 5 or $6? I don't think it's a bad pickup, actually, if you don't have a play set at this point. Because, again, much like the Phoenix, it saw a ton of play in this previous meta. We saw it again in all the aggro builds. It was in Monsters decks. It's kind of all over the place. And maybe more importantly, it's seen modern play in some aggro decks. And most importantly, in the Humans deck. Even if it's sometimes a one-of, if it's strong enough to be in the Humans deck, that's saying something. So this is a card you want to have in your collection. You're going to want to play a set of these. Number one, Carnage Tyrant, up $1.21 to $23.24. This card's had a couple hot weeks due to the fact that the Monsters decks have looked pretty good recently. And this is not only in that deck, but some others as well in Standard. But again, a lot of the attention on this card is from Llanowar Elf. 
And again, what if you can give this out on turn five? It just becomes that much better. People are thinking about those possibilities, maybe for a stompy deck or even just a way to make the monsters deck even better. All right, so let's move on to the crazy world of modern. And again, this week, we're going to look at the top five cards that lost value, but we're going to look at the top 10 that increased in value because, again, so many cards are just exploding right now. Number five, Chalice of the Void for Modern Masters. It's down 224 to 6615. So, of course, it's got reprinted in Masters 25 as a mythic, though. And it's actually already stabilizing in Masters 25, which is kind of scary. So even though, yes, these cards have been going down in value, this might take down a little more. I think it's going to stabilize sooner than later. Just sees tons of play, of course, in various formats. Number four, Gaddick Teague, down 225 to $40.95. Gaddick Teague's had a couple of really good weeks, and it came off the speculation that this would be good against Jace, of course, out of boards, and we did see decks try it out. Definitely Humans decks, some of the Boggles Hexproof decks running this out of the board recently, among others. And I feel like it just depends on how well it goes over the next few weeks. If people feel like it's good enough, they'll keep doing that. If that's the case, this card could stabilize, maybe even go up more over time. If it feels like it's not really pulling its weight, then they'll start to disappear and this card will go down a little. But regardless, this could use a reprint and maybe even a master set going forward or something like that. That would really help the value of this card, I think. But this week we're seeing snapback basically due to the fact that it had some big weeks. Number three, Celestial Colonnade. Down 304 to 67.49. Another card that's had some big weeks recently and it's just getting a little bit of a snapback this week. Nothing unusual here. Great card for control decks. Control decks are looking good. A lot of people playing them with Jace, but this card just had some huge increases, so it was due to stabilize. Number two, Daybreak Coronet, down 313 to 1596. This is the Future Sight version. Had a huge week last week, so again, just kind of stabilizing down a little bit this week. Key part, of course, are those hexproof decks that have been very popular this month. Dare I say it, that green-white hexproof boggles might be the hot deck of the month for March. So continue to watch the cards in those decks, but this one does at least crack down a little bit this week. Number one, Fetid Heath. This is down 342 to 2820. This, of course, is the Eventide version, and this was reprinted in Masters 25 as a rare. We actually did a video all about Masters 25 yesterday. I'll link it at the end of this one if you want to take a look at that and kind of get those details, but not much more to say about this. This card does see a little bit of modern play. It was one of the more valuable filter lands, so it does take down relatively significantly this week. And aside from that, these cards are all really good in casual formats more than anything. They all see some modern play to some extent, but at the same time, they're a lot better probably in Commander. All right, let's move on to the top 10 modern cards that have gained value this week. And my advice is stay really close to the modern market because there are a lot of cards moving that I just don't have time to talk about in this video. I can probably talk all day and not hit everything that's significant right now. It's really that crazy. But let's start with number 10. Raging Ravine, a 414 to 2991. A card that really could have used a reprint and hopefully will at some point. But at least for right now, this card's seeing a lot of play in Jund decks especially. So Jund has been a hot deck. You will notice this week a lot of the big Jun players, with maybe one major exception, are starting to cool off a little bit because they've been spiking so aggressively, but a lot of the other cards are still going up. Number 9, Engineered Explosives, up 439 this week to 5311. This is the 5th Dawn version, and this card has been trending down recently due to the fact it was seeing a little bit less percentage of play, but it has a really nice week this week as it's being picked up by some of the decks that are hotter right now, and that includes Control as well as Hollow One. Sees play other places too, obviously, but those two are driving this price increase, at least for this week. Number eight, Leyline of Sanctity. Two versions here. Modern Masters 2015 up 424 to $40.10. Magic 2011 up $40.40 to $40.64. So again, some nice increases, and you guessed it. This, of course, is part of that Selesnia hexproof deck. Number seven, Karn Liberated for New Phyrexia bounces back this week up 482 to 9269. This card got really hot when we found out it wasn't going to be in Masters 25 and the Tron decks, of course, being very popular decks in modern. This sees a little legacy play too, sometimes in like the Eldrazi decks. But aside from that, it had a couple soft weeks because now if you were worried about some of those big Dominaria spoilers from a couple weeks ago still, I'll let you skip to the next card. But you may already be aware there's a card we saw in that big spoiler, which was called Dampening Sphere, 
which was a two casting cost artifact that kind of hoses Tron, got people a little bit nervous for a couple weeks, and the value of this went down. However, when a lot of players saw the value going down, they took advantage of that and jumped on it this week, so it bounces back up. Number six, Meddling Mage from Alora Reborn, up 515 to 2697, has a pretty nice week. This card spiked a number of months ago when the Humans deck kind of burst onto the scene, and it's been stable ever since, but again, Humans drives another increase this week. Number 5, Mox Opal. Of 570 to 9199, this is the Modern Masters 2015 version in particular. Another card that definitely saw a spike when we realized that wasn't going to be in Masters 25. Very popular in the Pro Tour winning Lantern Control deck, not to mention the fan favorite Affinity deck. And also sees a lot of vintage play, too. Number four, Leyline of the Void. This is the Magic 2011 version of 630 to 2949. Card that sees play out of the sideboards, again, of some popular decks, including Hollow One, as well as Mardu Pyromancer sometimes. Shows up in a lot of the key decks right now. Number three, Noble High Arc. Two versions, Conflux up 674 to 7283, Modern Masters 2015 up 740 to 7499. Now, I don't really think we see this in Masters 25 because this was the World Magic Cup promo, and I'm sure they wanted to make that still kind of special for the time being, so I didn't really anticipate that. However, when it didn't happen, this card still went up, and again, this is in tons of decks, but it's really right now being pushed by humans. Number two, Goblin Lore. Two versions here this week to talk about. 10th edition up 818 to 2899 with starter 1999 up 825 to $26. Now, this card, of course, had some pretty big spikes when Hollow One burst onto the scene. Hollow One had a pretty nice week financially, and this card definitely is an expression of that. Number one, Liliana of the Veil from Innistrad, up $8.56 to $133. This is just getting ridiculous now. This card just keeps spiking and spiking and spiking, and I'm a little surprised it's still happening. I think I even said a week or two ago that I feel like this card has to stabilize. It's got to hit its ceiling because at some point someone's just going to say, you know what, I'm just going to play a deck that doesn't run Liliana. These are just too expensive. And I feel like we have to be at that point now, right? We have to. And I hope next week I'm not saying it's going up again, but I guess we'll see. Now, the Modern Masters version also went up this week, just missed our countdown, but it's not quite this high, but it's close, so... They are relatively comparable. And yeah, the card is just amazing. And a lot of people are picking it up not only for, of course, previously legacy decks, but also more and more for modern decks because of John driving that, of course. Now, even before the Blood Braid unbanning, this card was seeing lots of play in legacy as well as modern. A lot of folks running this, like Death Shadow Builds, among many other places. But yes, it really is John that's pushing it now to this price point. All right, let's move on to the more stable world of Legacy with the top five cards that have lost value this week. Coming in, number five, Unlimited Birds of Paradise, down 2250 to 7216. This is kind of normal stabilization for this card, honestly. It does see play in 9394 format. Some of those players may be interested in it, though, so I would expect this to stabilize relatively quickly. Number four, Ali from Cairo, down 3324 to 15875. Had a huge week about two weeks ago, I think it was. It just bounced up to $200. It's been stabilizing back down since then. I don't really think it was necessarily a buyout. Perhaps it was someone doing a light buyout of the cheaper cards and then trying to sell them. That's possible, I suppose. But I do think this card is still a little undervalued. Number three, The Abyss, down 52.90 to 542.24. Another card that had a big week maybe about a month or so ago stabilizes down just a little bit, though, but it's still retaining a lot of value. Number two, Moat, down 77.66 to 564. When it comes to Moat, this is kind of a normal stabilization move. As a matter of fact, when you start seeing Moat and dual lands on these lists, you know things are relatively stable. Number one, Mishra's Factory. This is the winter variant from Antiquities, down $137.50 to $200. Of course, this was recently again the target of a buyout as it starts to creep back down, perhaps being reintroduced now into the market. All right, let's move on to the top five legacy cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number five, Guardian Beast, up $31.86 to $299.78. And, you know, this card is starting to reach its price potential. Finally, it was undervalued for a really long time. I still think it's undervalued, believe it or not, because it is one of those key cards from Arabian Nights Reserve List. It sees play 93 
And as a matter of fact, it just is a card that was actually good back in its day and is kind of still good now. And that says a lot. You don't see that all the time. So I do think this does continue to go up over time. And if you have the money and you're somebody that likes to collect these Arabian Nights cards, I would get a copy in your collection sooner than later. Number four, Cosmic Horror from Legends of 4254 to 5650. Now, this is another one of those cards. We saw this happening a lot over the last few weeks. This card actually spiked a couple weeks ago, as a matter of fact. But this is a Legends card that's not on the reserve list. It got reprinted in 4th edition. There's a much cheaper copy out there. But somebody has been buying up a lot of the cheaper cards from Legends especially that are not on the reserve list. And it looks like this is just another one of those. But that has slowed down a little bit. Number 3, City Brass from Arabian Nights. Up $70.75 to three thirty-two fifty. Another card that is not on the reserve list. There are reprints out there much cheaper if you're looking for one. Again, a lot of 93, 94 players, though, interested in this original copy, not to mention collectors. And this had a down week last week, so it just bounces back this week. Number two, Taiga from Unlimited, up 137.13 to 375.45. So again, good sign that we're seeing some dual lands on here. One thing I do want to point out, too, the revised dual lands. We talked a little bit about this last week. They are just slowly creeping up a little bit, especially as some of these unlimited ones have had big spikes recently. Number one, Force Field from Unlimited, up $210.81 to four ninety nine thirty. dollars 30 Big increase this week. Probably a little bit of market manipulation here. I would imagine somebody's trying to pick up some of the cheaper copies on the marketplace, trying to sell them back at a higher rate. So I don't think this will be a stable price point. But again, this is a good card for $93.94 and also popular among collectors. All right, let's look at a few notable cards of the week. We'll start off with a couple popper cards that are hot. First one, Fairy Miscreants, up 29 cents to 98 cents. This is from Magic Origins, and this is seeing more play in those Delver decks, and I think people are starting to notice that now. Flaring Pain, this has been on our list before, up 38 cents to 230. This is kind of becoming a popper staple. You're seeing this run in a lot of different builds. Trinisphere. This is a card that I wanted to check in on because we have been following it over the last couple weeks. This is from Dark Steel, up $2.70 to $38. And this is kind of interesting. You typically think of this more as a vintage legacy card, and yes, still seeing play in those formats, of course. But a little bit more in modern now. A lot of people were looking at this card because they thought maybe it was a potential foil to Bloodbright Elf. I'm not really seeing that pan out now, but what I am seeing are the land destruction decks running this. Actually works out really well there. Phyrexian Altar from Invasion goes up $17.93 to $58.89 this week. Now, this feels like a buyout, maybe a little bit of a speculative buyout because it is a good card for casual formats. So it looks like somebody maybe went out there and picked up at least the cheaper copies of it that were out there on the marketplace. It's driving the price up a little bit. So it is a good card, a little bit overlooked. It's not on the reserve list or anything like that, but it hasn't been reprinted in paper. So it'd be kind of nice to see this card show up at some point. And our last card today is Onslaught's Bloodstained Mire, up $18.87 to $54.45. Now, the Concept Tarkir version is also going up a little bit this week, but this one really had a nice week, mostly due to scarcity. But the fact of the matter is, Bloodstained Mire is seeing a lot more play right now in Modern since the meta shifted a little bit. It's showing up in a lot of the hot decks, and that includes things like Juns, Hollow One, Mardu Pyromancer and Dredge, just, just a whole bunch of them that are extremely popular. All right, with that being said, that is the Market Watch for this week. Like I said, there's probably a lot of cards that are moving that we just didn't even have time to cover. There's just so much going on right now. So continue to watch the market closely. Be careful when you're making your purchases right now. I'm hoping things start to stabilize within the next week or two for Modern. I guess we'll see. But until next time, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.